It's such a rare opportunity to have luminaries in the choral world together in one place. And I thought to give us a little bit of context for the discussion, I would ask, uh, e we, we could spend a long time on each one of these uh, persons' sort of history in terms of what they've done, which is enormous in every case. But if we could just spend two minutes just giving a context uh, for, a little context for the choir, of course, that you're conducting today. And of course, you've been associated with those choirs for, for differing lengths of time. But just to give us a context for the discussion that we'll have. So maybe I'll start with uh, Michael. Sure. Thank you. Um, so we stand? Or? It, it, maybe you like to see us. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Lawrence and Ben, for introducing us. Um, my name is Michael Zauk. That's how we pronounce it correctly. Um, I started with Procoro in Edmonton just recently, in fact. This is only my second season. The choir has been in existence since the 70s founded by a person, Michel Gervais, from Edmonton. The person, uh, Michel has then moved away, and over the years they had a rotating roster of international conductors. All these conductors came from abroad. There was no Canadian, in fact, and so they commuted from as far as Stockholm and Copenhagen to come and work uh, in Edmonton with Procoro. I've been commuting now from Montreal for um, almost two years to Edmonton, and then I have a group in Ottawa and one, two in Montreal. So I've just uh, a month ago relocated with my family from Montreal to Edmonton, and I'm now the second resident conductor of Procoro in their 40-year history, and I hope to be there for quite a while and work with that excellent group. Thank you. Okay, I guess I'm next. Um, I met uh, Jesse and Elmer at the Nova Scotia Choral Federation uh, summer camp, and that was, I think, in 1979 or 1980. And uh, we worked together there, uh, and then they invited me to become the pianist for the Elmer Iser Singers, and, but I was still studying in London, England. So my very last day uh, in London was the royal wedding of Diana and Charles, which, where I sang as a member of the Bach Choir. And then the next day, I flew home, and uh, my first job was, uh, was in Antigonish with the Elmer Asher Singers at, a, at a, a program there. And uh, we've had many, many wonderful years. I had many wonderful years playing uh, for Elmer. Uh, and um, anyway, when he became ill in 98, uh, in, uh, the board of directors of the Elmer Asher Singers asked me to take over. So I've had um, a long association with the Elmer Asher Singers, both as pianist and as conductor. Hi, I'm John Washburn, and I'm the graybeard now of Canadian choral music, I guess. I started the Vancouver Chamber Choir in 1971 when I was 12. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm the only one left 43 years later. Uh, uh, and uh, we've had a transition committee now uh, with our choir. Uh, for 10 years. <laughs> and they, they keep saying, when are you going to transition, John? And uh, I say, well, uh, uh, don't call me, I'll call you. But um, uh, we've, uh, we've done a lot uh, d during the years. Uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, 30 recordings now, uh, a lot of them all Canadian music. We've got three discs of Schaefer music alone. And, um, and we also have uh, our most recent disc is uh, A Quiet Place, which is volume three of our Music for Healing series, uh, which we're, we're quite proud of. We've done a lot of commissioning and premiering of uh, Canadian pieces. We're over 300 now. Uh, for 40 years, we've did, this is we are on tour now, and this is our 84th tour. Uh, so uh, we're big in statistics. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, 
now we're going to discuss some of the burning issues, uh, we hope, and I think we, we will stay seated for this because then it's going to make it easier for different people to respond in different ways to different questions. Um, in in the, some of the suggestions that were handed to me, um, it, one of the questions was, is it, is it important to perform Canadian music? And, uh, and on the other hand, it's, this is a very easy group to, to ask that question of because the question isn't uh, whether to do Canadian music because you're all doing Canadian music. Perhaps um, um, a more important question might be, why do you do Canadian music? And maybe each of you could, could give us a, 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 a taste of that. Maybe we'll go the other way this time. Oh. <laughs> well, um, oh, I don't, I don't, don't have, have to stand to. up. Okay, well, I think better this way. Um, I, I think it's our responsibility. We're a professional choir, and we uh, have a, uh, we are funded at uh, all levels of government and uh, private uh, funding and corporate funding and foundations and so on. And all of the people that help us raise our budget of some million dollars or so a year um, uh, have expectations that we are going to do the right things. And one of the right things is uh, per performing the music of, uh, uh, of the composers of our own nation. Now, this, the composers have made it easy because Canadian composers write great music. And that's the... That's the secret uh, uh, if, you, if you want to get your music uh, sung and performed, is to write good stuff. And I think I want to add to that. I think, uh, as well as the responsibility, I think it has to come from the passion that we have to explore Canada's voice. And I really believe our composers here in Canada are really the voice of of us, of Canadians. Um, and um, so as well as responsibility, which we, we take very seriously as well, I think it, it really comes from a passion to explore that voice and to hear the new sounds and to experiment and um, really take time and uh, have adventure into the sounds of, of Canadian composers. You know, we're, we're so lucky, we're so lucky, as John was saying, in our composers. Here we have in the audience today, Ruth Watson Henderson, who is an amazing composer for voice. I, I, I'm coming, I'm coming. I have one more sentence about, one more. Um, and I want to say, uh, the Elmer Azar Singers are very proud to have recorded a, an album of the works of Ruth Watson Henderson. And uh, yesterday we sang a wonderful piece, Nocturne by Leonard Enns. And um, this is, a, you know, sort of a new discovery for me, this piece recently. And I just think it's Len, and Len is here in the audience today. And Len, thank you so much for writing <clears throat> such beautiful music. So it's, the, it's, it's knowing the composers personally. And um, it's a great treat for us to have composers come in to our rehearsal and to be able to work with us. The singers get to know the composer. And hopefully then we're able to carry that forward to the audience so that the audience also gets to know the, the person and the music, and it's, it's part of us. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a passion. Thanks. Um, I'm just Canadian for about, about a bit more than one and a half month. <clears throat> so uh, there's a slightly different perspective in the sense that um, I came in to Canada 10 years ago from Europe and, and so look at it from the outside. Um, and working, especially with young composers, it's, uh, okay, this is your country, what do you want to tell about your country? And if you write a good work about this, I'll, you know, I'll do my best to make your voice heard. I find especially in Montreal talking with young people, with students after the, the demonstrations and the tuition hike and all that, there was uh, such an uncertainty of like, what are we doing here? Why are we here? And so on. What's the society for? So there's a lot of, of young composers who, through music, respond to that. I always find contemporary composers, it's their responsibility to, um, 
react or comment on today's society, on the environment, on whatever they feel is there right now. And sometimes contemporary music is quite ugly, but that's today's society too. That's another side, the side of today's society. So I find to work with composers, with in general with composers nowadays, um, is to make their voice heard, their comment on on what is today, what's going on in society. And so I say to young Canadian composers, what do you want to tell, talk about? What's your opinion? And through that, uh, we hope we can make that voice heard and bring it to a broad audience. Um, I have a question that I'll throw out to, to any of you who would like to, to address it. We've been very preoccupied uh, over, over many years with northern identity, with what, what does it mean to live in a country where you can freeze to death? <laughs> because it's obviously different from living in a country where you can't freeze to death. And of course, there, it has been said, uh, I mean, you know, Glenn Gould famously you know, said that northerners were, were visionaries, that, that because of the, the, the extremes of, of temperature and climate and geography, that, that we, had, we therefore had a, a rich spiritual and, and cultural life. And uh, again, it's, it's always fascinating me to know whether within, for example, Canadian music, is there something identifiably uh, northern about it? A anyone like to take a, a shot at that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just add, please, same. Excellent. I mean, you would, you would in some ways like to think, oh, there is a Canadian sound. Um, I'm not sure there is a Canadian sound. I think there's a great diversity of sound from our composers. Um, and I don't know, there, in a lot of works, there is an openness um, of sound, I guess. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not sure there is a particular response to the, co the cold thing. And certainly we can't, <laughs> we can't ask John to respond to that, being from Vancouver. <laughs> but no, no. Do you have, he is going to say something. I'm, I'm from Lotus Land. <laughs> yeah. I'll throw out something, and uh, perhaps it relates, uh, it certainly relates to Murray Schaefer. There is, there is something about Murray's uh, mythology that, that, of course, comes through in so many of the, of, of the music theater pieces. There's something quintessentially northern. I mean, it's very Wagnerian what he's created, all these gods and goddesses who somehow do, in fact, relate to each other. But it's hard to have imagined Murray coming from a, a, a warm climate, a southern climate. There's something, yeah, yeah. there's something, so anyway, I just throw that out as, yeah. it's, yeah, as, yeah. A, as a theme for discussion as opposed to there being any, any particular answer. Um, I, I, I just thought I would mention the whole multicultural thing. Uh, for me, that's very important, especially in Vancouver, uh, where we have so many uh, ethnic strains. I think you have it here in Toronto as well. And it means that, uh, uh, an incredible richness for our artists. And, and in terms of, of the Vancouver Chamber Choir, we just added uh, the, we keep a list of how many different languages we've sung in, and we just added 41, which was Mongolian. And, and, and it's just, um, there's an openness in our society uh, uh, which I think of as part of the, the Canadian fact. And, um, and it, it's, it, we're open to, to explore any of those venues that we want. Please. Sorry, I'm just going to add to that. I think that's very important. Um, here in Toronto, we have the same wonderful diversity in our, in our, in our city here. Um, for me, it was, um, and for choirs, I think, choirs have always been searching to connect people around the world. And that is to look into different cultures, find out the language. And this happens right from children's choirs through to adult choirs, through to professional choirs. And I think that we are very, we feel, I think as choirs, very connected to people, uh, other singers and other cultures, uh, because we, we really try to make the effort to learn about those cultures and, and believe in the richness that it brings us. And um, I know that um, I was really searching a number of years ago to do something on an Islamic theme. And it was very difficult because I'm not, I'm not Islamic and, and I wanted to approach it with 
the respect that it deserved, and you, you just can't go and take a chant and do something on it. And we needed an Islamic writer. And we, I was so, we were so fortunate, we found a wonderful young writer from Vancouver uh, who wrote a piece, and, uh, and we were able to do that in what I thought was a respectful manner and to introduce our audiences. So John is quite absolutely right. I, you know, we're, the choirs are searching and attempting to bring people together throughout the world. Um, did you want to add something? Uh, just, just, a, just a, a brief observation, which I find interesting. Um, you know, thinking about the northern, the northern sound and expression, it, it's really that sound that I find fascinating. Comparing to the northern hemisphere, if we look across Iceland and then further, um, for example, the chamber choir in Stockholm, um, throughout the period when they would have new singers, the singers were trained in the dialect of Stockholm. They were all Swedish, but they were trained in that specific dialect of, you know, a radius of 10 kilometers. So they would all sing the same. So that makes these choirs from different countries so distinct, I find. Maybe the BBC singers, they have just all Brits from London. And if I look at Prokoro, if we talk about English, I have, well, we have Canadians from the prairies and then from the Maritimes. So I'm, I bet there are two different Englishes, aren't there? <laughs> we have a guy from New Zealand. Um, we have now a fellow from Scotland and then me as a Swiss trying to teach them English. Okay? <laughs> so just in terms of variety we can achieve as, as a Canadian society or a Canadian choir, just the richness of sound, that's what I find distinct about it. Um, and another issue that uh, I'm curious to know what, what you all think, again, as an outsider to choral music, one of its great strengths, of course, is that I think something like 2.5 million Canadians, some huge, you know, it's a large percentage of Canadians sing in choirs. It's very connected to communities in all kinds of uh, ways and cuts across all kinds of boundaries, socioeconomic boundaries, which is absolutely wonderful. And in a sense, that's the bedrock of choral singing. On the other hand, we have uh, a group of Messe elite professional choirs who are, uh, can hold their own with, with, with any in the world. And again, as an outsider to choral music, much as a, uh, it is a blessing that there are so many choirs, it's sometimes dif difficult to, to help, in a sense, the public to understand that it's not a matter of better or worse, but there's a professional choir is necessarily different. And in a way, we don't see the same phenomenon in, in, in instrumental music and other genres. So I'm just curious, to, is this, this must be something that you've thought about all your lives and all your careers, and just wondering if you could just uh, reflect on that a bit. On so-called on so called amateur choirs. And uh, so it's always a sort of a quest for us to figure out the actual meaning of amateurs versus or alongside professional because amateur of course means means for the love of singing so does that therefore mean that professional choirs don't sing for the love of singing but of course they do and they are incredibly dedicated on the other hand amateur choirs many many of them are professional uh, children's choirs through to adults and it's in the way that they they uh, they act and they 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 really focus on the music, music making, and so they are professional amateurs, right? So, but, the, but amateur choirs, as they sit, um, there's so many wonderful ones throughout Canada, but they are, they are strong, um, whatever level they are, where they are, because they are a community of singers. And I think that being a community is, is, the, is the thing that really holds them together. And that one community, whatever their focus, and there are many focuses of, 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 um, of choirs throughout Canada, whatever the focus, it, their individual focus, they are joined through their love of singing to every other choir in this country and every other choir um, in the world. That has been and that will be. There is a huge connection throughout the world. And um, the community factor for me is is very strong, they support each other in times of trouble, they rejoice with each other. Uh, when there's a happy occasion, you know, it's, it's a community. So that's, that for me is a, a tremendous uh, factor for working with community choirs. Um, and of course I work with, uh, with one here in Toronto. 
Yes, how many of you uh, now sing or have sung in a choir? Ah, uh, yes. I, I, think, I think what puzzles me is that we have so little influence on Canadian society. We are, we are pervasive, we're everywhere, and yet Harper is not afraid of us. <laughs> I, I, well, or Trudeau or any of, the, any of those guys, you know. I just wish that we could gang together and sing them out of office. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I, don't, I want to say, uh, when we did a, we just did a, a tour up, up north, so, uh, and there was a, a gentleman there who said, uh, of course, there are many fine senators in our Senate, but he was saying, if there is going to be a change in the Senate, we should just make it all choral singers, and, and every dispute will be fixed by singing some Bach. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, we probably have time for just one more, uh, one more question, and then... Uh, we could take a couple of questions from the audience. Um, of course, many of you were at yesterday's wonderful solo recitals. Today, you're going to hear both the choirs alone, and you're going to hear them singing together under Kaspar's Putinins. Um, I would just like to get a, a few comments. Of course, coming and singing individually in your own voice, as it were, is something that you do uh, all the time. Coming together um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a group and an ensemble is not something you do all the time, although I appreciate this is, a, of course, not the first time that you've done it. But I, I wonder if you could just reflect a little bit on the challenges uh, uh, and, of course, the opportunities of what we're trying to do this afternoon. Uh, yes, um, I mean, challenges are simply logistical. You know, they've done a great job here at Sandstreams to keep everything, I mean, for me as a Swiss, really on time, so <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well done. Um, <laughs> and uh, f for me, just bringing one group and, and then have John and Lydia come with the other groups and have then somebody from the outside who is not really connected to any of these groups, it doesn't, is not so biased, just has an own idea to create an instrument as if you would take a, a beautiful grand piano and he is just putting that grand piano and, and just, you know, polishes it here and there, makes sure all, all the strings are really nicely and, and, and the keys work and all that, and then so he can just sit down and make fantastic music. So that's kind of what I've seen happening over the last um, 48 hours, just a creation of an instrument, which is very fascinating to see from, from the outside. Music is communication. And uh, what we do when we get together is, is, is that, simply. We communicate with each other. We become a larger community. Uh, and to work with other people that are at the same level as us, we enjoy working with uh, uh, less expert choirs and helping them along. But there's a great joy to going in and singing and having everybody at the same level. And, um, and with the same intent. And I, I just love it when I see the, the choirs all uh, mixing and, and uh, talking and working together. It's a, it's a terrific thing, and I love my colleagues here. <laughs> Right back at you about that one, and we love each. I love you guys too. And uh, the, it is uh, bringing the choirs together has been a, an amazing time, and it has created a wonderful community of these singers, and just exactly what both Michael and John were saying. And um, the creation of this instrument has been fascinating to watch since um, when did we first get together? Friday, and um, started working, and Kaspar started working, and he's just been gradually, and he's very patient and, and wonderful. He's just uh, been bringing each part. So when we heard today in this wonderful instrument that is this hall, it, it was astounding to me. And when you listen today to all the pieces they sing, uh, the new piece by Murray is wonderful, and the Goretzky is absolutely stunning at the end. To hear so many singers sing so quietly and then open up into the hall is absolutely astounding. So it's really an exciting, it's unbelievably exciting for us.